So I repeat, there is no such thing as the future. There is only the next move that we make. And that move can be originating truth if it is poetic. And it can be repetitive impersonation if merely political. The 20th century was a blundering between ideologies. Ideologies are false futures drawn in big pictures by those who take it upon themselves to shape our destiny. History as we have known it is mostly a concatenation of disasters followed by cleanups afterwards. The 20th century moved into the future with the speed and panache of a joyriding technology. We have moved so far and so fast that it will take a long time before our souls catch up or any cleanup can take place. We cannot remember yesterday any more than we can remember tomorrow. In the same way that the truth can be lost through clumsy excavation of the past, so too the future, which is an even more delicate and sensitive opening, can be desecrated. Mission statements, ten-year plans, vision documents, can be a way of levelling the future and imposing upon it our own myopic architecture, unless we harness the sensitivity and clairvoyance of certain artists who are gifted with insight about our own particular singularity of contour and the approaching plasticity with which this should be fused. As for the past, so into the future. As Heaney said, all I know is a door into the dark. We need to harness eyes that can see. The way forward is evolution. Ireland as an outpost on the edge of Europe can be a poet's perch, sensing the rhythm and the shape of the next move forward. In destitute times, it is the fool, not the king, who takes us by the hand. But what does it mean to feel our way forward? And what is the precise role of the artist in this regard? I'm not saying that the fool should replace the king or that the artist should take up the reins of government. I'm suggesting that the body politic is in fact a body, that it has different constituent parts. Unless each of these is working in a particular way, at its appropriate function, the movement of the total organism is impaired. The artist has a precise and indispensable role to play. It is certainly not everything, but it is something akin to yeast and dough. Its accurate and pervasive participation allows every part of the whole loaf to take a certain contour. Without this specific ingredient, the whole batch remains flat and cannot achieve its purpose or assume the shape it was intended to take. How this happens is a matter of organisation, but the end result must be correct valorisation of the artist's place and role. Whether this means the establishment of a parliament of artists or the incorporation of such a constituency within the existing structures of representative government is optional. What is not optional, and what must be accomplished in whatever way allows it to happen, is that the voice of the artist be heard. Such a voice may not make itself heard in any of the media which currently constitute our preferred channels. These consider art only as entertainment or as propaganda. Art as prophecy is unrecognised. It may make itself heard in the most obscure and even sometimes perversely obscurantist sound bites. In face of our accustomed channels of garrulous and facile communication, art can appear dumb. Art can be despised when arrayed against the moral zeal, the confident logic, the ordered proof of journalism. It can appear as a trifling, impertinent, vexatious thing, a tumbler who has unrolled his carpet in the way of a marching army. But we must make it our task to detect such tremulous sounds and translate them sufficiently to make them available to our corporate future as a marching army. As Yeats has said so disdainfully, it is not the business of artists to make themselves understood. It is the business of the people to understand them. Sometimes translation can destroy what it purports to convey. In such circumstances, it is necessary to wait and remain attentive to the truth which is present in the work of art until it reveals to us the appropriate way to transform it into architectural energy.